Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and today it is Monday, November 21st. Every day on this show, we like to talk about OTC and penny stocks, stocks that are catching attention, jumping and bumping. We're looking for stocks that can make us some money. Now, a lot of times we look at stocks that are on the OTC market. A lot of times you look at stocks on the major exchanges because the fact of the matter is a penny stock is any stock under five bucks and they're on every single market. Now, most of the stocks we look at are on the OTC market. All that news right there, that's news I've looked at over the last five or six days, and that is good news. These are your mergers, your acquisitions, expansions, uplistings, no public offerings, no financials. Though that's important, it's not what most people are looking for. So there's a lot of great information in there, and it's all still current. Now, when I'm doing my research on OTC stocks, this is my go-to site right here, folks, without a doubt, all the time. At least this is where I always start. This is the only site on the entire internet that is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. God, does that save me so much time. I do not go to Google unless I absolutely have to. I love this site. They've got a lot of information here. It's free. You don't even have to sign in. Boy, you can't ask for more than that. Well, maybe a little more color. Maybe a little more color. So how did our OTC market finish today? Well, let's go ahead and refresh this. It does not automatically refresh. Ah, what do we got here? Yeah, an average day. We got low dollar volume, under 2 billion. We're at 1.7 billion. Share volume, we're still way under 10. You did see we were over that a couple times. We're down at 6 billion, just hovering above 5 billion, which is about where our average has been. Our trades, we're stuck between 250 and 300,000. Now we have broke 300,000 four times this month. We're hoping to do it again. And we are at the upper end of that 250 to 300. So maybe tomorrow, fingers crossed. Now today, being Monday, there was a lot of excitement first thing in the market across the board. As far as I could see, there was a lot of activity, but a lot of profit takers, a lot of it fell afterwards. And then at the very end of the day, things started picking up again. Now I've got some stocks we've looked at sometime over the last year, but they have a lot of things going on right now. Momentum is building up on these, and I think it's time we take a look at these stocks again. Let me show you what I found for us today. Now here's a stock that was cranking it up today, folks. This is AITX, Artificial Intelligence Technology Solutions. Whew, what a mouthful. This company did have news come out today, but it wasn't anything impressive. The fact is they've had news coming out all month. Lots and lots of news talking about more deals they're making, more robots that they're selling, about awards they're getting for their robots, and how their revenues are starting to pick up. What I see here, folks, is momentum. This is a startup company that's broken out of the gate and starting to do what they do, and they're starting to catch fire. And I think now is a real good time to consider them. So AITX finished today just over a penny at 0 0.0135, just under 23%. That's how she finished. She is on the pink tier and current, and she's got those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Now, these are real important the longer you're in a stock. There's a lot of important information that is being represented by those green ticks. So if you're going to be in a stock for a long hold, make sure you see these. If you're just doing a short swing or a day trade, the building could burn down while you were in the trade and it really wouldn't matter. So as you've probably guessed, this company's into robots. They are in security and monitoring robots. They create mobile robots, platforms. They've got all sorts of things. They've got gate guards so that you know you can protect entry into certain areas. They also have these bigger ones on wheels that interact with people. And these actually connect to those ones that look like dogs. And they talk to each other. And that big one can send the dog out to do reconnaissance out there. And then the big one can process all the information. So they are working AI and 5G and all that crazy stuff. And I think this is going to be huge in the future. And right now it is starting to burn. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Pretty big, went from about 15 million to 144 million. Wow, it's like 10 times their normal volume. Share structure. Well, this company doesn't have disclosures. They've actually got 10Ks and 10Qs, so I could not find the float in there. Just seems to be a habit. 
So what we've got here is about 5 billion shares. Now I usually use the unrestricted, but if you want to use the float, <laughs> we can use that. 4.8 billion shares. So it is a huge float. Financials. Well, the company is making money and it's growing. As you can see over the last four years, from 114, 260, 360 to $1.4 million. And we know those are the numbers. Just put those three zeros behind there and it all makes sense, right? And they got to keep a lot of it. They got to keep almost a million dollars. Their fiscal year ended February of this year. And looking at it quarterly, well, they are making money. I see $385,000 for the first quarter of this year and $267,000 for the second quarter. But what's impressive here is look at this. They have brought down the cost of their revenue significantly. This was $293 for that $385. That's only $34 for this $267. That's what they need to do. Tweak it and find a formula that brings in more revenues as their business grows. All right, let's take a look at disclosures. We've got a recent 10Q here that came out just about a month ago, and I do want to jump into that. Now, we're going to look at some figures here so that you get a sense of what's going on. This is a startup company. They were spending a lot of money to get their wheels rolling, and then when you start doing business, you got to spend more money just to do that business. So it is a delicate balance, literally a balance between the liabilities and the assets. Speaking of assets, their current assets, uh, August that just passed, compared to February that just passed, they ended about $4 million less in assets, dropping from 9.2 to $5.8 million less assets. And somehow they ended up with 4 million more liabilities, right? It went from 30 million to 34 million in liabilities. As we noticed though, the revenues are climbing. And if you compare the last three months of this year to the same three months of last year, we are up almost 100% from that point in time. And keep in mind, they're also paying less for their revenues now. They seem to have gotten some formula. Hopefully that continues. What else can we see here? Oh yes, look at here, net loss. The last six months ended August of this year to the last six months of August to last year. Look at the difference here, net loss. They were at 40 41 million last year. Net loss this year is just under 9 million. They covered a huge golf here. So there is a big flux in financials right now. There's a lot of transition. Money is being moved. They're making more products. They're bringing in more money. They're expanding. Things are growing. So things are going to be wild on the financial frontier. But we do see the revenues coming in, and that's how everything else is affected by the revenue. So as long as they keep growing and business keeps coming in, they're going to keep growing. Now let me show you about their business. Let's take a look at the, some news over here. Now we got lots of news over here, and the most recent is right down here. And would you believe that all of this news has come out in the last 30 days? Check out some of these headlines. AITX's subsidiary, RAD, has a surge of 33 security robots placed on order. AITX receives an expansion order from global small box retailer and a major power utility. The company signed on six new dealers for their RADs. They now have five top utility companies that have placed orders for their robots. Uh, let me see here. Oh, yes, the CEO had to actually testify in court, and this is a good thing. One of their robots caught a crime. It had recorded it, and they needed a real person to come in and verify that everything with the robot was legit and could be used, and ta-da, they got a conviction. I do believe. I do believe. Then they just had uh, two awards given to them for firearm detection and light my way. Now, I'm not real sure what light my way is. Is that some dog that walks with the light for you so you can see? The other one, firearm detection, they've got these special scans where they can tell if a person's carrying a gun, hiding a weapon. So that's a big deal. You might see these in airports soon, right? Then they had news come out today. Let's take a look at that. Now, as I said, the news really isn't all that big. They're talking about an open house that they're having on December 7th 
at their facility. The event will be held at the company's manufacturing facility, the Rex, located in Ferndale, Michigan. And they go on to talk about all these different sorts of people it's going to be open to and what sort of technologies they're going to share with them. Though I did pick out a few pieces of information here. RAD solutions are specifically designed to provide a cost savings to businesses of between 35 to 80 percent. You get rid of all of the things that are associated with humans, all the insurance, all the man hours, all the uniforms, the flashlights, you know, everything, you start to save money. RAD has a sales pipeline of over 35 Fortune 500 companies and numerous other client opportunities. Each Fortune 500 client has the potential of making numerous reorders over time. We know that's true. And finally, AITX has filed for uplisting to the OTCQB. So they're not just talking about it, they say they've actually done it. Folks, I like what I see here. The company has got various types of robots that are being picked up by companies. More are being ordered because they're proving themselves. And that's what the market is sort of moving towards, isn't it? Unmanned guarding between drones and robots and laser eyes and everything else that they got. Definitely better than Terminator. All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see what she looks like because she was hot today. No big surprise here. We're going to be doing our charting on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform. You get it just for signing up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. Go do it. I'll wait. Kidding. Do it on your own time. We got stocks to talk about. So we are looking at AITX, a six month, four hour chart. And you can see she's been falling the entire time. We had a nice strong run here from about uh, uh, just under a penny to a penny and a half. You had about 600, 700% run right here. She then fell again, not only under a 200, but is now under a 50 day SMA. Hit a low bubble here of 006 and has just been sitting down there until here recently, these last two days, well, I can even say three days actually, she has started to run and run hard. She started down here at about 0065 and went to single 0185. You're looking at almost 300% run. The volume the last two days is incredible. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, and our MACD are both shooting to the moon. These two are related to each other. The MACD uses the whole price. The percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. I prefer my PPO, but I'm going to keep my MACD as well. And our RSI is still in the overbought, though you can see that pullback right here. But it is still on fire in the overbought. Let's look at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, not a whole lot going on. She got above her 50 about a week ago, stayed there for a few days and squeaked over her 200 three days ago, and then has just rocketed. The technicals are still very strong. Everything is still high, but you can see the pullback has an effect on all of them right now. Let's take a look at our five day, five minutes, see where she's heading. So we did have a bit of a jump, not a big one, but she got on top of that 200 and showed she wanted to get off of it there Thursday. Yeah. And then Friday, we had a nice bounce in the morning and she climbed all day long, had some pre-market aftermarket activity. You can see she never has that. There's a telltale sign there was some interest. And then she continued to climb, hitting her high here at about noon and then falling away and coming virtually down to where she hit first thing in the morning, right there. So she gave away a lot of it. There's no doubt about that. I was watching this. I thought for sure it was going to come down to the 200 the way it was catapulting down right here. She has come back above that first bounce in the morning and that has become a support for her now and she's sitting up there. Our next support is obviously going to be right here where all of this is sitting. That's up there at 0 .0139 actually. Our technicals, well, they had a heck of a drop right there. Looks like we're trying to recover right here. We did have that strong spike right there. She's consolidating, going sideways. Our 20 is on top of her. Nine is about ready to cross. Things look like they're trying to recover right now, folks. And if she does drop, I don't expect she's going to go below that 200. And that's a beautiful buy price. Honestly, if she was to dip, it'd be a blessing. You'd be down here at just a smidge over a penny. Buy on a penny, it doubles when it hits two cents. 
that's 100% gains in just one digit move. Goes to three cents, you've tripled your money just that quick. It's a great place to buy in, folks. I think this stock is going to move and continue to grow. I think their business is going to continue to grow. I think their robots are neat. I think they're very practical. I can see them in shopping centers and airports without looking gaudy or intimidating. And they're working. So the stock right now, it has had a run. It's showing a lot of excitement. You may want to wait for that pullback. See if she comes down to there and get yourself a starter position if you like this company. Do some more DD. We didn't cover it all, but there's a lot of good things going on right there. She is carrying debt. She does have a deficit, but what startup company doesn't? I personally, I like AITX. We're now taking a look at WDRP, Wanderport Corp. Come on down. Wanderport hasn't got any fresh news or filings, not for over a month. What they do have is a lot of tweets coming from the management. They've been talking about some sort of acquisition over in Vietnam and other acquisitions that they're going to be making. And they've been tweeting all week. And today they put out tweets and it sounds like it's just now about to happen. So things are building up right now. She finished today at 0 .003 with just over 11% gains. Now they are on the pink limited tier. That's a bad thing. That means they are late on one or more of their financial filings. And they gotta get them caught up in a certain amount of time or they'll get yanked off of the OTC and put into a timeout called the expert market. And they stay there until they get their filings caught up. So it's just easier to get them done now right? They do have a transfer agent verified, but they do not have a verified profile yet. So before you think about this for a long hold, get that verified profile tick up there and eh, you might as well wait for this to turn pink too. So what does WDRP do? Well, according to this description, Wanderport leverages blockchain, digital asset, and metaverse technology to offer products and services in the areas of health, wellness, and self-improvement. And I just read news not too long ago they were getting into NFTs. Not anymore. None of that. You jump over to the most recent piece of news that came out at the end of September. This is their newest description. Wanderport Corporation is a holding company formerly specializing in blockchain, digital asset, and metaverse. The company's new focus will now be in the areas of automotive, electric vehicles, energy, and manufacturing. We just flipped that egg over. It's not sunny side up anymore. So new business completely. So what was the relative volume around this company's tweets? Really? Well, now that surprises me. That really does. She has dropped considerably, almost 66% in volume. Went from 4.2 million down to 1.5 million. Hmm. Share structure. All right, I've already jumped into this and it tells us right here 478 million is the float for Wanderport so we can trust the unrestricted and we can trust the float this time. That don't happen very often. Uh, financials for this company. Well, they are making some money, nothing to get excited about. Remembering those three zeros, they got $100,000 at the end of last year and they got to keep about half of it. And right now, they're just making enough to pay the bills, I guess, $10,000 and $8,000 over the last couple of quarters. And they do have another quarter that should be over here. Ah, no, it's not going to be. They are pink limited. That means they are late on one or more of their filings. And I can see right here, they go every three, three, six, nine, twelve, three. We're missing our six and we're missing our nine. So they have two quarters they do not have up here right now. And they don't tell us why. So we need to see those pretty quick. I'm surprised they've gotten that far without being pulled off. Now, if the company is going to be pulled off because they're just too far gone and late, you will see the words grace period appear over here. They'll be in yellow, but it won't give you a date. And that's really what you want to know. So if you come over here to quote, Click that quote and scroll down to right there, proprietary quote eligibility. There'll be one more line here and it will be grace period. And it'll tell you the very last day they're gonna be on the OTC market before they get pulled off. And that's always important information if you're thinking about investing in a stock. All right, anything else we got here? No, all these filings go all the way back to 2009. And news. As I said, the news is old. We've got news from March and uh, well, that's it. I know they had a piece of news here from September. We were just looking at it. So what we've got are those tweets. Let's go take a look at them. 
Now, there are lots of tweets to look at, but I just want to give you a flavor of what's going on here. November 14th, besides our overseas acquisition endeavor, we're also working on DC fast charging technology, EV conversion, and a couple of other trial EV projects yet to be announced. The potential is very good. With proper execution and additional capital, we can grow very quickly. Hey, found this Chevy with UA Multimedia's help as a possible EV conversion candidate. Plenty of room for batteries, yay or nay, right? Then we've got a couple from today. The share purchase agreement and relevant documentation has been signed by the company in Vietnam. The docs are en route to the U.S. to be countersigned. Please continue to follow us for more details. And the very last one, uh, no, we got two more here. The signed share purchase agreement should be received by our attorney tomorrow, working on our incorporating the new business this week. Going to speak to some VinFast folks at the LA Auto Show this week to gather information and explore some business ideas. So there you go, folks. They've got an acquisition from Vietnam. They say they've signed the paperwork. They've got it going to their lawyer so that it can get to go where it needs to. Hopefully that's going to happen fast. I don't know if it's tomorrow, the next year, whenever. And then they're incorporating. They've got other acquisitions. They're looking at EV vehicles. They just teased us with this being... Uh, a, a vehicle that they could make. They could duplicate this, replicate it, and turn it into an electric vehicle. So they've got our imaginations running right now. And it's all going to depend on what they tweet next or if they put out a filing or a news press, which I wouldn't hold my breath for. They're doing all of this through Twitter. And with the right piece of tweet, <laughs> can I put it that way? I think this stock could run. Let's go take a look at that chart. Six month, four hour chart for WDRP. And of course, we're all looking at that huge run right there. That is a giant run of about 300%. Went from 003 to 009. It started on September 20th. Now, I went and looked. There was no news or filings, but there were tweets. Of course, there were tweets. And what it was was just them announcing they were getting out of digital assets. That was it. There was no more information for this to initially start to run. Then they started adding on it. A couple of days later, they started talking about automotive, energy, electric vehicles, and this was the end result, 300%. And then she gave it all away, came right back to where she started from, and that's where we're sitting right now, where it all started from. Now, all this information that was being considered is now being done. We're right here at ground zero with everything about ready to close. Now, I will agree. This happens more often than not. First time you hear about something, the very first time you get this huge run. Then when they close in on it and get a letter of intent signed, you get a medium sized jump. Then when they finally close the deal and it's done, you get a little bump and that's all you get. So I honestly don't know what's going to happen here except to say there was a lot of excitement when they first heard about this and right now we are back at ground zero. Our technicals, our uh, PPO has an imminent crossover right now, is just about ready to do that, looks like recovery potential. Our MACD is just approaching the signal line, same thing. Our RSI is a bit tempted right now at 52. We could use a good strong tweet or a piece of news. 20 day, one hour view. So we had a nice pop back here of 0025 up to 004. Tried to break that 200 and failed miserably. Came all the way back down to a 50 day SMA, then lost footing there. Got underneath every single SMA and has somehow stumbled her way right back to the 200. Woohoo! So she's sitting on the 200 right now above her 50. Technicals, the PPO is pushing up and on the right side, as is the MACD. Those look good. Our uh, ADX shows a continual of this trend right now, so everything looks good in that sense. And still, our RSI is tepid at 53.54 right now. Five day, five minute. All right, so this is our last day, right? And yeah. The 18th was Friday. We had two days of falling. She got down here to a low of 0026. Hit that low again today, right at the bell, and then took off. 
and pretty much climbed the whole day. Now, she didn't have a lot of trading. She lost two-thirds of her trading, right? She went down in volume, but she climbed all day. And she went from that 0026 up to 003. It wasn't a huge run. What would we get? 11% out of it. May have been about 20% at her high. But all the technicals right now show she wants to continue growing. There is a slight pullback right here. But something's bound to happen. Keep your eye on Wanderport's Twitter account. Forget the news. Forget the filings. Once they do this deal, they'll have to put out a filing. And hopefully they'll put out a news press. But I'm sure we're going to hear about it first on Twitter. Now, right now, her price is right in the median range, folks. She is right where she's been sitting most of the time. Her high here is 0035, which is, what, about 20, 15% more up. So I would look at this. I'd do some more DD. We haven't dived into her financials or anything like that. But we're looking for a day trade. We're looking for a good jump and bump off of this. When the right tweet comes out, this could get some heavy volume and get a short run. Remember, most of these runs we're getting right now are in the morning. No later than 12, 10 in the morning is normal. So if you can catch something running 10 to 12 in the morning, take it folks, take it. Don't stick around all day long. You can see these are having a habit of falling back. Not all of them, not all of them, but most of them. We're now taking a look at a company that most of you are probably familiar with. This was really hot during COVID. This is ticker RSHN, Rush Net Inc. Now, they didn't have any news today. They didn't have any filings. So they did come out with a financial disclosure yesterday. And that can get people excited. I glanced through it. It shows that they're doing okay. Nothing too bad, nothing too good. But that's really not what everybody's concerned about with Rush Net. Rush Net was hot during COVID. They made two acquisitions. Positions. They got one company, Helios DX, which works with test kits and droplet cards for a whole lot of different diseases and things. Then they got Grandiza Healthcare, which is the laboratory which does all the tests on the test kits and the droplet cards. Well, not too long ago, they told us they were going to spin out Helios DX onto the NASDAQ. Yay! That means free dividend shares for all of us. Well, they went and made the deal even nicer. They said that Helios DX is now going to absorb Grandiza Healthcare in preparation for this spin out from RushNet. It only makes sense that you bring the laboratory and the test kits together. So now they're both going to be going to the NASDAQ. And today the company put out a tweet and basically they're saying we're getting on with business. It's taken a while, but we're here. We've got some information to share with you. And that's why we're looking at this company right now. So RushNet. Finished today at 0.0018 with just over 12% gains. They're on the pink tier, they're current, and they've got both those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. So they look good. So what was the relative volume today around that tweet? Or it could be the financial. There's no telling. It was good. Better than that last company. She jumped from about 12 million to over 26 million today. More than doubling her normal volume. Share structure, it is that high, folks. I wish I could tell you it wasn't. We are well over 7 billion shares with RushNet. I wish they would do something, and I'm not asking for a reverse split. Forget I even brought it up. <laughs> Financials for this company. All right, at the end of 2021, they did $5.8 million and got to keep over $4 million of it. And these last few quarters, they did $1.3 million and almost $2 million. And as I said, they just had another disclosure come out, and they're right on target. They haven't taken any drops. They're just continuing on with their momentum. Disclosures. Well, as I said, they did just come out with that financial quarterly report for September. And we do have a few SEC filings down here, but they are a couple weeks old. So let's take a look at the news, see what we have over there. Our most recent piece of news came out, well, it was the one we were just looking at, talking about Helios DX absorbing Grandiza Healthcare. That was the actual last piece of news we had. And that's the same thing down here. So the tweet is really what we got going here. So we're over here at the company's Twitter account, Helios DX. And we're going to look at three tweets they put out on the 17th and the 18th. The one on the 17th, 
If you find yourself questioning our resolve to accomplish what we set out to do 19 months ago, consider this. It will cost $58,000 to complete this last request by FINRA in order to gain approval. 19 months comes down to six days and one revival. We accept. I'm not quite sure what the countdown's for, but there it is, folks. Six days and one revival. On the 18th, quick update. Today we file to revive RSHN in Nevada. Once it is revived, we will file simultaneously to dissolve and merge to Colorado properly. Council has spoken to FINRA and approval will follow. Then we begin the long anticipated next steps. Are they talking about the spin outs? And the last tweet came out on the 18th as well. The revival dissolution and merger documents for RushNet along with a $58,000 payment are being submitted as we tweet to the appropriate state agencies. So everything's happening right now. Something is imminently going to change and then we're going to be back on the road to getting Helios DX and Grandiza Healthcare up onto the NASDAQ. I don't know of any other deals that they got going on right now. So that has got to be it. And they said six days and a revival. So once the revival which they just submitted payment and forms for is done. We got six days. You better keep your eye on Rush Net. Let's go take a look at that chart. Right though, we are looking at Rush Net. This is ticker RSHN. That's a six month, four hour chart. And the nice thing about it is most of the time she's above the 200, unlike most of the stocks we look at. She's had some nice bounces off of that 200 as well. This one here is about 300%. That is 250%. Now she is crashing right back down, but she's staying right on top of that 200 for the most part. She did have a fall under here, fought hard and looks like she's come right back up over the 200 right now. Now, it doesn't look like it, but she's on an uptrend, folks. I'm gonna draw a trend line here across the bottom of as many of these price points as I can. We'll go right there, a little lower, right there. And I'm gonna extend that to the right and we'll get a better look at that when we come in closer. So our technicals right now, what do we got going on? Well, it looks like she's trying to grow actually. Our PPO is pushing up, getting above that signal line as is our MACD pushing away from the signal line. And our RSI is still a bit cool. We are down here just, just under 55. We are above the 200 right now on our four hour chart though we don't have anything special to talk about in volume yet. 20 day, one hour view. So she's had a lot of bounces off of this trend line. You can see that she's hanging on that trend line. She broke out of it, came down and hit a low bubble, hit her head on it a few times here, broke it, tested our 200, came back down through both our trend line and then back up over the 200. Two, three tests, you normally can see something continue on. Right now, she looks like she is still pushing up. Now, we had a strong day a couple days ago. Looked like she was going to continue, and the very next morning, it fell. So we're going to watch this, absolutely. Our technicals, they still have a lot of strength in them, but there is some pullback right now. No lie about that. Five day, five minute. So here's our trend line. She is riding on that trend line, sticking right around it, and right now looks like she could go up or down. It, it's a coin toss, folks. This tweet is gonna make all the difference. If they tell us, now it's not like a tweet, it could be a news press with this company, it could be a filing. When they get revived, and I don't understand all the intricacies of that, but I'm sure they'll tell us, then they're gonna move on. And as I said, the only thing I'm aware of that RushNet has on the stove right now is this spin out of these two companies together, which means we're gonna get free dividends in that company once it happens. So right now the company's at a median, She's hanging around her 200. We do see that the 200 is starting to curve up on our five minute, which has just come back into the picture. Our technicals do look weak. They all do look like they are coming down right now. She could come back down to her 200. She likes to sit around that 200 until some catalyst comes out. So right now we are at a price of 0018. 
the 200 is down at 0017. There's not a whole lot of difference here. This may be a good time to consider this company. You're not going to want to jump in after the wrong or right tweet comes out because you're probably going to get it at a much more expensive price. So consider this stock at 0018, though she could fall down to 0017. And that tweet, that news, that filing, whatever it is they're going to bring out, it's on a six day countdown. Put RSHN on your countdown list, please. So those are three stocks I was personally watching today. My favorite of them is AITX by a mile. I like AITX. Yeah, they've got some deficit and they've got some debt, but as I said before, what startup company doesn't? This company is dealing with security robots, which I think are gonna become the norm. I think you're gonna see them at every store. You're gonna see them at every mall, airport. I think they're going to be everywhere. So I like what this company is doing. I think it's good for a short hold and a long hold. Wanderport, they got a lot of stuff happening right now. They got one acquisition in Vietnam. They're closing. They say they've got other acquisitions. They're changing business from digital assets to EVs, automotive, and energy. A lot of change coming. There could easily be a bounce with the right tweet from this company. And then we got RushNet. And we know exactly what's going on there. No speculation. It's a countdown. They're spinning out those two companies onto the NASDAQ. Once they get this revival done, they said there's six days. I don't know, but I'm not going to ignore that. I don't think you should either. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.